In this video, we'll take a look at a very, very simple circuit and go through it uh, so that you have a better idea of what actually happens when you put something together on a breadboard. So the first thing we're going to do is get a, an LED. And the LED, uh, it's a diode. And a diode means that it allows electricity to pass in one direction but not another. And you'll see that the I've bent these leads, but you see that the um, the leads one is a little bit longer than the other, and the reason for that is to indicate the polarity of the LED. So the correct way to uh, put this into the circuit is with the long lead attached to the more positive voltage. So we're going to take the uh, longer lead and we're going to put it in the top portion of the vertical poles and we'll put the shorter lead in the, in the bottom half. Then I'm going to connect up the uh, power now the power, we're just using the, the Arduino as a power source. We're not actually going to upload a program, but uh, we'll connect the ground to the blue ground bus at the bottom. And we'll find the 5 volt pin. And we'll connect it up to the plus bus. And then I'm going to connect from the plus bus to the uh, positive lead of the LED. Now at this point we've got electricity which is running 5 volts to the plus bus here and that is being connected then to the positive uh, lead of the LED. But the LED doesn't light because electricity to work needs to run in, in a circle. It needs to run in, a, in what we call a circuit. And the circuit requires the electrons to be able to flow. Now if we were to, and I'm not going to do it, but if we were to connect the negative lead of the LED to the minus bus, that would, that would present a rush of current through the LED. Now the LED can only take a, a small amount of current, about 10 milliamps of, of current. And if we complete the circuit just using a regular wire, it would make the LED flash and then it would, it would be destroyed. It would heat up and uh, then it would no longer, longer work. What we need to do in the case of an LED is we need to complete the circuit through a resistor. Now a resistor is a, a thing that will reduce the flow of current through it. And this will enable the LED to work and uh, not overheat with too much current. So what I'll do is uh, take this. Now this is this is a 1k resistor. And I've got actually I've taken out two. We'll put the second one in in a second. But a 1k resistor will certainly drastically reduce the amount of current that could flow through the LED. And it should turn it on, but it won't be terribly bright. There, so you can see that it's turned on. Now it doesn't matter whether I complete the circuit by removing the LED 
which connects to the uh, ground bus. Ground is just another way of saying minus. Or if I disconnect the wire that goes to the plus bus, it still turns off the, the LED. This is my first circuit. So I've got actually electrons flow in the direction from negative to positive. So uh, from the UNO, the electricity goes from the negative bus or the ground bus up through the resistor, which limits the current, and then through the LED, which turns the LED on. The electrons are exciting the atoms in the LED uh, junction, which creates light. And then the electrons are moving up to, to the positive bus and to the plus 5 volts on the Arduino. A 1K resistor is a little bit too much resistance. Actually, the ideal resistance for a, an LED of this type is probably around 300 ohms. So what I can do is I can take another 1K resistor and if I place these two resistors in parallel, it will reduce the combined resistance from 1000 ohms to 500 ohms. So let's do that. I'm just going to touch it so you can see the difference. Can you see the difference in the in the brightness? It's not as apparent looking at through the camera as it is in real life. And there's a property with electricity that says that if you're talking about resistance, the electrons, half the electrons will go through this resistor, and the other half of the electrons will go through this resistor, and overall you are providing a resistance which is about half of what it would be if you just had one resistor. If you put the resistors in series, that is, you force the electrons to go through the first resistor and then through the second resistor, you're doubling the resistance. And we might not even see, yeah, we still see the LED light up, but it's uh, a little bit dimmer than it was before. So here we've created a circuit. I've got, uh, I'll add the second resistor here in parallel. So we've got a nice light and we can make it turn on, on and off by touching the positive lead um, by hand. But let's say we want to add a little switch. With our push button switches here. I had straightened the leads of one of them. So I'm going to connect one of the leads. Now I'm not really sure how this button actually works. Is the button press connecting these two together or connecting this lead and this lead? We won't know until we try it out. So I'm going to guess that when we press the button down, it will uh, connect these two leads and the switch together. No? 
It's not. If it, uh, so these two leads are always connected. So I'm going to put it in here. Okay, so when I close the switch, these two points are getting connected, which allows the current to flow through the circuit. There. Let's take another look at what we've just done here. Okay, so we've got uh, from the Arduino, we have the plus five volts and ground. Now there's a, a symbol for ground. I'm going to introduce you to some electronic schematics here. The symbol for ground is this. And this just indicates, in this case, that it's zero volts. So ground is actually zero volts. Now in order to get our circuit, what we've done is we've placed a switch in series with an LED in series or in series with two parallel resistors and resistors look like this And this is a 1 kilo K, and this is a 1 K ohm. This is the uh, omega, is the Greek symbol for ohms, which is the, the value for resistance. This is our LED, and this is our switch. When we close the switch, Eraser. When we close the switch like this, we allow current to flow through the circuit. Now, there's two ways we can think of electrons. Electrons are, are wonderful little things. All atoms have electrons, and depending on the atomic weight of the atom, there are more or less electrons. The heavier the atom, the more electrons there are. And some substances will allow us, uh, some, some substances allow electrons to be uh, temporarily uh, removed or uh, given to, to other atoms. And these are known as conductors. So we've got conductors here and we have insulators here. So insulators don't allow their ele electrons to be exchanged between atoms. Uh, certain atoms that do allow their electrons to be removed temporarily and uh, are conductors. And then we, so we have things like copper, Copper is the best conductor. And insulators, uh, what's a good insulator? Um, actually, water is a good insulator. It's the, uh, it's the impurities in water that allow it to conduct. But in general, water is a good insulator. Glass, ceramic. These are good insulators. Copper, silver, gold, aluminum. Aluminum, 
None. Etc. We like to use copper. Copper is by far the best conductor. Um, looking at the schematic symbols, I've shown you the resistor, the switch, and an LED. And, and the way the LED is drawn is that the there's a kind of a black arrow which heads from positive to zero volts. And this is contrary to the actual electron flow. As I mentioned before, electrons flow from zero volts to five volts. And this is called uh, electrical or electron flow. Then there's known, something known as conventional electron flow. And this is why we have this arrow moving down. We can blame uh, Benjamin Franklin for this because when he uh, rubbed wool w uh, against some, um, I can't remember what, what it was, was it ivory? and created static electricity. He created a drawing which showed electrons as moving from plus to minus, or plus to zero. And that conventional electron flow has determined all of our symbols, like the diode and the light-emitting diode, show electrons as moving in this direction. But the actual flow of electrons, as physicists have uh, proven goes in this direction. So it's confusing and it really doesn't matter for the sake of this course which directions the electrons are flowing as long as they're flowing as long as you've got a closed circuit it will do work for us. We don't have to know but this is why the LED uh, light emitting diode symbol shows an arrow going to ground. Uh, it's because of the way electrons used to be uh, thought of as uh, running, what direction they, they thought electrons ran, ran in. Okay, uh, we've got this switch. Let's draw another circuit. What happens if I have two switches in parallel? With my diode light emitting diode and my resistors. So this is connected to Arduino 5 volts and this is also connected to the Arduino ground. And we'll compare it to this circuit. Two switches in series. So I've got parallel and series. So let's, let's do this parallel one first. <clears throat> I'm 
going to rearrange things. I'll keep my LED where it is. I'll put my first switch here. And I'll prepare my second switch. Two switches here. All right, so I'm going to feed the plus voltage into one side of the switch. each switch. So each switch gets one side. So here's the 5 volt bus. The one side of the switch goes to the uh, two switches. And then the other side of the switch We'll connect to the LED. And the second switch, we will do the same. And we'll consider this resistor to be, um, we've got two resistors here, they're in parallel, but we'll just think of these as the two 1Ks in parallel would say it's 500 ohms. Okay, let's try it out. That one works, and that one works. When that one's on and that one's on, there's no change, of course. So when this switch is closed, electrons flow through this side of the circuit. And when this switch is closed, we see the same thing on the other side. So there is a flow. In other words, we can say we get an on if we press this button or this button, this button or this button, if we have them both on, it makes no difference. So we could call this an OR circuit. So let's do uh, some, make a change. We'll try the series next. And in the series, we are going from, from one switch to the other.
So let's see what happens. I try this one. I don't get anything on. Let's just make sure that, yes, that light does work. When I press this one, it doesn't turn on. So both of them are off, it's off. When one of them is on, it's off. The other one switches on, it's off. If both are on, then the light turns on. So it requires this switch and this switch to be depressed before I see the light turn on. So we could say that this is an AND circuit. The only way the LED will flash, will turn on, is if we close both switches. Like that. Then we get current flow, work being done, LED turns on. What we've just demonstrated here is actually two circuits that make decisions. This one allows for a decision on whether two electric pulses turn on a light. This circuit allows either one of these switches to be closed. This circuit requires both switches to be closed in order for the light to turn on. This is known as digital logic. And these two circuits are the backbone circuits of all digital computing. If we didn't have OR or AND circuits, we would not have cell phones, we wouldn't have computers, we wouldn't have uh, a lot of what 21st century life is all about. So what happens in the Arduino are actually millions and millions of tiny circuits or and AND gates which help the computer to make decisions on inputs and drive outputs in an intelligent manner.